I see it's an every man, every man, every man. Anybody expecting the coming of the Lord there? I said, is anybody there expecting the coming of the Lord? Look at this. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Are you going to go to heaven without purity, without holiness? Are you going to meet the Lord when he comes without this purity of heart? Every man that has this hope, he purifies himself, even as he is pure. What does that mean? Verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the Lord. For sin is a transgression of the Lord. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You're saved, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You're sanctified, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Hey, many people are calling fake salvation. They say telling lies. They're still stealing. They're committing adultery. They're fighting. They cannot deal without secret drinking, drunkenness. They cannot deal without secret smoking, marijuana. I'm saved, I'm saved. Look at this whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil. Don't cover up. Don't say, I'm a leader. I'm a walker. Ah, Samson also was a leader and a walker. Don't say, I've been here for a long time. Yes, I know. Achan has been there for a long time. But it says over here, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is the day. I said, this is the day. If you have been weak and the devil tied you up with the courts of sin, secret sin, private sin, that work of the devil will be destroyed today. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, no, it's not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Now you've seen very clearly that we need to have purity, sustained purity, as well as preservation. We're nourished in the word, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we're born of the Spirit, blessed in the Spirit, baptized in the Spirit, we're on our way, I'm on my way to heaven. I said, I'm on my way to heaven. Look at this point number two. This is solemn, solemn paradox and peril of negligent busy pilgrim. Why is it a paradox? You think that if somebody is busy, that fellow will be on top. He's busy, he's busy on this, he's busy on this. His whole life is almost about spiritual things. And he's, uh, you know, gets there and gets there and gets there, but is negligent about a particular thing. I'm reading to you from First Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king. And he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, the man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life. Or else thou shalt be a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. As thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Do you know that a person can be too busy? Look up here for a moment. 
Now this section talks to everyone, everyone, everyone. And it talks to deeper life more than any other church. Anybody in this nation, anybody in this continent that knows the church deeper life will know that we're not just deeper life church, we're busy life church. And because we're busy, we think that's the way to do things. And over the years, being busy and busy and busy has taken over our lives. Now, busy does not mean deep. Busy does not mean spiritual. Busy does not mean we're all right, we're okay. You can be busy and be shallow. You can be busy and be, and be super, uh, superficial. You can be busy and you can be negligent. This man here said, as thy servant was busy here and there, the one I was to watch over, he was gone. But don't think about the other one you are to watch over now. Your own soul you are to watch over. That soul is gone. Have you noticed, uh, you know, those who are so busy and a very important essential thing, uh, they do not mind, they do not take care of. You know, that you can be so busy and gain Sodom and yet lose your soul. It happened to Lord's family. You can be so busy and serve in the field and not sit at his feet. You're like a mother combat about many things but you're not like mary that you'll say i need to take care of my spiritual life i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy even when you come to church and you're hearing the word of god what you are to do after the service good thing not bad thing pastor finish in time there's a marriage committee for me to attend Pastor, finishing time, there is a meeting for us to attend. And there are people that they belong to this committee and this committee and this committee and that committee. And every hour of the day, every day of the week is busy. And there is no time for their personal life. There's no time for their soul. They're busy on the flock and they neglect their family. They're busy on work and they neglect their work of the Lord. The work of the Lord, the work of the Lord, and there's no work with God. They're busy feeding other people's souls and they are not feeding their own soul. They are famished in their souls. That's why you look at this solemn paradox and the peril of negligent, busy pilgrims. I come to a song of Solomon. Chapter 1, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, we're looking at verse 6. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of vineyards in the plural, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Look at that. My mother's children, my brothers and sisters, they were angry with me. You thought they were pleasant with you. They were nice to you because they want to walk the willing horse to death. And this man is, is always available. And you call him, what are you doing, sir? I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but anything you want me to do again, I'm available they load it on him. Another person calls him and he says, now this is available again. I, well, I, I'm almost, you know, to my throat. It's like the walk is, I, I'm just inside it. But I'm available. I'm available. I'm consecrated. You load it on him. He said, those who do that, my mother's children, actually, they were angry with me. They hated me. They wanted me to neglect my soul. They wanted me to neglect my family. 
They wanted me to neglect my own vineyard. They wanted me to overlook that I'm a pilgrim. I have a responsibility to get to heaven myself. And they made me keep our vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. I'm going to show you. Look at that now. Look at Judges chapter 8. We're looking at Gideon. Judges chapter 8, and I went looking at verse 4. Judges chapter 8, they made me keep our vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Judges chapter 8, I'm reading verse 4, and, and it says, And Gideon came to Jordan, and he passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint and yet pursue them. That's a busy man. That's a busy man. And that's a committed man. That's a consecrated man. That's a man that says, I'm going to put my neck to the yoke. It doesn't matter because I'm going to do it. Well, so far, so good. Faith and yet pursuing. But the other side of the story is here. Now look at verse 24. In verse 24, and Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that she would give me every man the earring of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And in verse 25, and they answered, we will willingly give them. And then, and they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the uh, earrings of his prey and the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold beside the ornaments and the colors and the purple raiment that was on the king said me of Midian and beside the chains that were about the camel's necks and Gideon made an effort thereof and put it in a city even in Ophrah and all Israel all Israel all Israel went a warring after it which sin became a snare unto Gideon and to his house the man was busy he was busy he was busy with the 300 those were 300 consecrated men but they had no time to check up the law of God anymore the word of God anymore it had become busy life in religion think about yourself are you like that you know in the past um, we used to have uh, two different retreats let's say Easter retreat will have session one session two sometimes we'll have Easter retreat number one this weekend, Easter retreat number two the following weekend, Easter retreat number three the following weekend, Easter retreat number four the following weekend, Easter retreat number five the following weekend. The advantage of that for us at that time is that if you were a worker in the first Easter retreat, in the second Easter retreat, you are just there completely. You are not working. And you sit down there and soak in the word of God so that you will not be so busy as not to take care of your life, of your soul, of your family, of your spiritual pilgrimage. But now we're all having only one because we can transmit and it's wonderful for us. But you know what we're doing now? A mini congress is coming so that all the workers who were very busy at the congress this is the time now because even though you were there you were hearing message and you know but you didn't really soak it in you couldn't understand because you were busy but now the mini congress is coming and this is a time for you to do yourself a favor and not to be like Gideon and then you were doing a particular kind of work in the January congress now this one is coming the first week of February over here and then you go there again work 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 no you will not be so busy. And then if anybody will call you and say, oh, brother, you are there, you're sitting. What are you sitting down for? You know, we need your attention here. We need your attention there. We need your attention there. Ah, uh ah. -uh. The children of my mother, they hated me. They were angry with me. And they made me a keeper of vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. 
And the same thing we should even do for, let's say, a December retreat. You know, a December retreat, we have thousands of people. You're in sanitation, you're in this, you're in that, and you're very busy. You don't have time to listen to the word of God. And you've been doing that from meeting to meeting. December retreat, you're busy. And, uh, you know, Congress, you're busy. At the time of mini Congress, you're busy. Every time, you're busy. In the day and the night, you're busy. When are you going to take care of your soul? And when are you going to prepare for heaven? They made me the keeper of vineyards and my own vineyard. Have I not cared? And you look at this Gideon, what became of him? He became an idol worshiper and led the whole nation back into idol worship. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again and went a warring after Belim and made Be 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 Beros their God. And the children of Israel, and the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. His, his life was lost. His labor was lost. Everything he did was lost. Because you know why? He was so busy uh, he, you know, pursuing and yet fainting. And they went back into idolatry and the whole nation forgot God. You don't want to walk like that. You want to slow down a little bit. You know, how do you spend your Sunday. Somebody belongs to the marriage committee. And that same person belongs to the choir. That same person belongs to, is also a local pastor of a local church. And it's also, you know, looking into that and looking into this. And for money, bef before you even come here in the morning, he has to be here because he's the choir. And then after the service, they're pulling him here. They're, they're, they're expecting you at the counting room. They're expecting you here and there. And the, no, there's not, not even the time to eat or to do anything. And if we say, my brother, come back, come back a little. Sit down a little. Pastor, what have I done? I want to serve the Lord. I want to die on the world. I don't want to care for my soul. Don't worry about my salvation. Don't worry about my purity. Don't worry about my being filled with the Holy Ghost. I just want to walk, walk, walk. Every bone in my in my body is crying out, walk, walk, walk. Walk and be lost. You are not going to be lost. That's why I will pull you back and say, no, come on, sit down here. Some people have forgotten how to sit down. They are forgotten how to pray. They are forgotten how to take care of their own soul. Because that has become a habit now. And it is eating up the very life of deeper life. Bible church. We are going to turn everything around in Jesus name. And you know all these that were saying sometimes. Uh, people don't understand. They think uh, we are doing evil. They think we are punishing somebody. When you tell him please step aside and pray for your soul. This activity is too much. March. You're dying. You're fainting. And your life is not what it used to be. They made me the keeper of vineyards and my own vineyard. Have I not? Come back, come back to first uh, today's uh, Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. I'm reading that again from chapter 1 and I'm reading it from verse 6. Chapter 1 verse 6 it says, Look not upon me because I am black. Because the son has looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me, they hated me, they made me the keeper of vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. They made me the keeper of vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Let me show you another man. His name is Jehu. Look at uh, Second Kings chapter 10. Second Kings chapter 10. They made me the keeper of vineyards, very zealous and very active. But my own vineyard have I not kept. We're looking at uh, Second Kings chapter ten, and I'm reading here from verse ten. Second Kings chapter ten, and we're reading from verse ten. And it, no, 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 now, no, now that there shall uh, uh, let me let me look at it very well. Well, okay, it's about chapter ten, verse ten. 